Hey there, event marketers. Jessica Heasley here with another episode of EM All Access, where we connect you with some of the industry's most innovative events and the marketers behind them. Today's episode is sponsored by GES, a global full service provider of live events, and it focuses on planning and strategy development. The growth of experiential marketing has created larger event budgets, representing bigger portions of the integrated marketing mix. They're being planned with larger marketing campaigns, and as a result, are more connected to brand objectives and ROI than ever before. I spoke with GES Senior Vice President Dan Hilbert about shifting strategies shrinking turnaround times, and what he calls the orchestrator model. Let's listen in. B2B events today don't look a lot like the B2B events of even just a couple of years ago. Could you talk about some of the trends in B2B events that are really impacting the industry right now? The major trends are actually coming in in terms of the way people are planning, not necessarily in terms of stuff, right, and what you see at the events. And what I mean by that is there's a couple things happening. One is events are being planned within a larger marketing strategy, right? So within a marketing team and within different touch points, uh, advertising, digital, public relations, whatever that particular brand or client is going to market with, events is now part of that mix. What's interesting is that the power of events has made it a larger part and a larger spend within that mix. So because of that, what we're seeing is a different way of planning that frankly is becoming less of a lead time. And what I mean by that is if you are part of a marketing mix, there's an assumption by the client that you can move, shift, go into other things at any point in time. So the trend that we're seeing actually is we're getting opportunities, right, and RFPs on events that usually have a nine to 12 month sales cycle come in six weeks before you know the events actually happening and that's a trend that's both a challenge but it's also exciting because clients and brands are looking at events as a critical and um, marketing touch point that's akin to advertising or public relations um, so that's one challenge the other the other um, trend I should say is as it comes to who is actually um, managing the actual events with the agencies. And there's this uh, orchestrator model that is happening more and more when it comes to the relationship between an agency or agencies and that particular client. And what I mean by that, again, in terms of ways of working, right? the, the, the day of land grabbing with agencies, uh, in an a integrated agency team is over. Literally, agencies have to stop doing that, right? Because the orchestrator model actually puts the client in the middle who already has decided that they're going to use several agencies based on their services to complete an event to execute and plan. The best agencies right, are those that respect and have empathy for the services and expertise of other agencies and, able, and are able to work together that way. So with this different, with a different kind of model, a different kind of um, format, does that create space for uh, different kind of event strategies then when you've shifted how the B2B industry has been doing things for a while? Yes, it does. So one good example in terms of a way of working to your question is that let's start looking at an event over several days, over two days, over one day, as a campaign that starts from beginning to end. Right? It'd be the same thing if you looked at a promotion or an ad or a PR campaign. The aggregate adds up to the final message, and hopefully the final message has created awareness and amplification. If you take different components of an event, general session, award celebration, networking opportunities, learning labs, whatever it may be, you can treat those as separate entities that, when put together, create a campaign within the entire event. So what you begin with, potentially, is the idea of awareness. Awareness of 
the issues at hand with the brand, right? Then you have to decide what type of form that's, that's placed in. And you can finish with essentially asking for advocacy. So they go through this campaign, just like a brand would, from awareness to consideration to trial and then to advocacy. And that's what an event can do if you take a look at it as different components to an ultimate campaign. So I think a lot of event marketers put a lot of technology out for technology's sake or for that wow factor, but that's not necessarily always the best strategy. Can you talk a little bit about technology as a trend? Yes. Um, it's kind of uh, very close to my heart in terms of um, how we address technology in the event space. I think in many, many regards, we are all blue sky thinkers. We're marketers, right? And the request to have innovative technologies, to go places where you know, a brand has never gone to in terms of engagement at an event is quite commendable, but it's also quite aspirational and in a lot of ways not necessarily pragmatic when it comes to investment. And I truly believe that that's why what you've seen in terms of what has been utilized in technology has been very focused in on apps, things at registration, sharing, social media. But when you look at virtual reality, when you take a look at some more evolved RFID technologies, they're not in those events uh, they're not in events currently because I think they're cost prohibitive. And as that goes down, certainly um, uh, those will be used more and more. But I think we all have to be honest with ourselves that our aspirations may not translate to what we can actually do. We should always be aspirational and dream about what, what we could use technology for. But when we do programs and develop programs together, I think sometimes the resources and the energy to try and figure that out, knowing that it's not going to happen, probably because of cost, I think is energy that could be put forth on other parts of the event and the way it's planned and executed. It's probably counter to what a lot of people believe out there, but it's, 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 it's real. It's fact. I mean, if virtual reality was really, really um, possible, you'd see it at every event, but you don't because it's still cost prohibitive. So let's continue to do what we're doing um, and making the guest experience at these events more um, engaging by using things like apps. Um, and one day it'll change, but those cost issues need to come down. As events are becoming more integrated within the marketing mix, they're being viewed as platforms for campaigns, no longer just a moment in time. Positioning events as campaigns, or part of campaigns, requires smart planning and the embrace of new trends and strategies. I'd like to thank Dan for joining me and you for watching. Learn more about this episode's sponsor, GES at GES.com and explore our growing library of EM All Access conversations and behind the scenes tours at eventmarketer.com.